All right. We have a minute until the scheduled start, but what's been happening is that actually a lot of people are showing up in the um, first five to 10 minutes. Um, what we'll do today is breakout rooms and I'm gonna go ahead and make some. Morning. Morning. Okay. Antonio, I'm going to make you host and ask you to make me co host. Okay. Your co-host. Uh, I think you made my tablet co-host, or my tablet is still co-host. There's two Christine Natrices. Uh, I see. The tablet is just, I've gotten in the habit of using it to write on screens. Thank you. I know more about Zoom than I ever wanted to know. We, we actually I just recently learned about this screen annotation thing. Oh, have you not seen me do this here? I do I, this all the time. I, uh, well, okay, now I probably gave away the fact that I didn't pay attention. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. I, I guess I didn't use it too often in the main session. It's really useful when you have someone sharing a screen and they're showing you what they're doing and you can yeah. circle what they're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. I, there's actually things I like better about doing that than interactively. <laughs> it can be a little easier to just go, right, right, yeah. this. <laughs> right, yeah. Now that you mentioned, I think I do remember seeing it. For some reason I completely blocked it out and then like, yeah, I saw, uh, Sergey do it a couple of days ago, and then I, yeah, I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I talked to Helen, and like Helen was like, I've never heard about this. Tell me more. <laughs> wow, because like this is what I do with my tablet uh, when I teach. I I write on my slides, mm -hmm. and it is invaluable. And and we actually so we moved the Jetscape workshop online in March and we had scheduled to have our IT people help our group learn about Zoom like a week and a half before the university shut down and everybody moved to Zoom. So we got the very last available one-on-one -on -one appointment for mm -hmm. Zoom help. <laughs> it's like, well, you booked early, so we're keeping it, but yeah, it was a wild ride. This is a. Wild oh, by the way, I also have to run off at ten for the Star Jet meeting. Run that, and then I'll be back at, at okay. eleven. It should be a short meeting. I haven't heard of any contribution, but there is a general discussion that we should have. But after that, I'll be back. Okay, so I think because today is troubleshooting, especially knowing that Ragav will be stepping out for a minute. Um, and I think I hear Antonio's cat. So um, let's go ahead and do breakout rooms. So I've set up three. I am going to go. So Raghav is the Docker expert. He is also good at general troubleshooting. Um, 
Antonio, you guys now know. I think there were a couple HEP data problems, issues with prettifying. I'm less useful for general issues than Raghav and Antonio. Um, but if there is a line, you can give it a shot and I might redirect you. All right, I'm going to go join my breakout room. Raghav, do I need to assign you? Yeah, I don't see oh. it. Um, ah, I think, Antonio, can you assign Raghav? And I, I think people should be able to join breakout rooms, but otherwise you're going to have to have, without being assigned, but otherwise you're going to have to have um, Antonio assign you. All right, I will be in the room. Um, Antonio, if we are ready for a higher statistics run and the analysis is basically in a good place, um, what should we do at this point? I think you'll have to talk with Christine. Okay. Um, do you want me to send you her room? Uh, yeah, I guess send me to Christine's room. Thank you. So anyone who wants to go to a specific room, just let me know and I can move if you're not able to do it by yourself, I can send you to, to a specific room. Hey, Antonio. Hi. Um, should we be able to see the breakout? How, how do you get to the breakout rooms on your own? Uh, for some people, it will appear close to chat, share screen. We will have an option, uh, breakout rooms. Oh, OK. So you're able to, to join. Yeah. If you not... can't see that, I, I can send you to a specific room. OK. I, I'm OK for now. I was, just, I was just curious how that works. OK. But thanks. Just let me know. Sorry, I joined a little late. So what are the specific rooms for? Uh, yeah, there's Hagaf that you can um, talk about RCF, Docker, or specific. Oh, the same as before, OK. And also, Christine, if you have any issue with uh, verifying the, the histograms or with HEP data. OK. Uh, I don't think I can go to a specific room on my own. Could I can you send you. Meet with Christine, please. Okay. This is Azita. Yes. But by now I'm starting recognizing people by voice. Okay, I I'm sending you to Christine.
Hi, Antonio. Hi. You can also put me into one of the breakout rooms. I think it usually is room two for flow. Uh, yes. Uh... Vito does. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Okay, I think I cannot add it, so I will send you to room three. Okay, it's fine. Hi, Antonio. Actually, I have a question. Sure. I put a path into the chat. And there is a data file with a thousand events. Uh, what does this PT hard zero to one means? It means that it contains events with particles with zero to one GeV or something? Uh, no, this is... Um... These events, they were generated with a minimum um, requirement of the, the, the PT hard when, it, when you generate in, in PTR. Ah, okay. or, or, or I think in PTR 8, it's called PT hat. Uh, mm -hmm. For this one, uh, I think it's 5 to 20 GV, the I mean, varying between five and twenty GV, the the minimum PT hard. Yes, probably. I can I can check that. Of of course, that doesn't mean that all particles will be within this range, but mm -hmm. uh, that the hard interaction will be around that. Yeah, it's zero to one, uh, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. Yes. I and mean, which I... one is do you recommend to use in the in, in like this? Um, what kind of analysis you're doing? Um... Yeah, it's copper gold, and basically there are ratios of eta and pi zero and spectras. And, and RAB. In your analysis, it, it goes to higher PT. Uh, how? Yeah, the, uh, I think the largest PT is 20 GeV. 20. Okay. okay. Or, yeah. So maybe this first PT harbin will be enough. If you don't see too many uh, particles that you are interested in, you can maybe use the, the next PT hard, and then probably you see more um, higher PT particles. Okay, because this 1000 even seems to be uh, not enough for. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can use the, the next PT hard because then it would be much easier to see uh, particles around uh, 10 GV, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. No problem.
Hey, uh, Antonio. Yes. Can I get you to add me and Charles to room five, please? Room or just to any empty room. Oh, OK. OK, I send you both to room five. Thank you. Hi, Antonio. Sorry for the delay. I had to finish our lecture. Oh, no problem. Since you're here, I would like to make a question. Yes. Um, I, I think uh, David uh, is trying to fill the, the counters with the event weights using copper copper. Mm -hmm. And he saw, and I am also seeing with some simulation that I generated, uh, some negative values when you get the, the sum of weights from the counter. Do you have any idea why we have this negative weights? There shouldn't be any negative weights in, if you're talking about Pythia and mm -hmm, Yes. copper, copper. They, 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 the the weight should be positive, definite, the weight distribution. If you can send me an example of that, I would be grateful. So, so the event weights in Ankantria are only there uh, because we introduce an impact parameter sampling bias mm -hmm. to sample more central events than peripheral events. If we just sample like nature, then we would get almost just peripheral events. Um, so if you can send me an example of that, I would be I would be grateful because that shouldn't be there, I think. I can see no reason for negative weights. Mm -hmm. You need the, the simulation? The, uh, or yes, the... so that, that would be best. So if you have a Pythia run card or something or a Pythia.cc file where you get some negative event weights out, because then it's easier for me to track down where something fishy happened. OK. Uh, OK, I'll send you the, the .cc that I'm using to generate the, the event. Uh, yeah, I, I'll send you by email. OK, thanks. Thank you. Hey, Antonio. Yes. Good morning. Morning. Uh, can I ask ask you a question? So I started over. Can I share my screen? On a sh uh, Antonia, can you assign me to Christine's breakout room because she's asking for help? Yes. Okay, so I had to start over, so I am you know, way behind. But I tried running, um, I added the, the book histogram and I try running the, um, the dots sh file, mm -hmm. but then I got an arrow about um, no projection up found for parents. Um, can I see your, your .cc file? So this is so here I have the unstable and yeah. um, the muons. Have you added the the header for the unstable particles? In the yes, in the... it's right here. Yes, it's there. Okay, and then you have uh, ah okay. I, I think you're missing uh, the line. Um, uh, declare where you pass the object up in a string. Uh, okay. Oh, 
okay. I will add that in. Yeah, yeah I, because I think maybe you're trying to get this uh, in the analyze and, and the object to not be there. Okay. Okay. I'll check that out. Okay. All right. Let me try that. Okay. Okay, thanks. No problem. Okay, let me go here. So to have that declares this. I, I came back again, Antonio. I got counter orders. I should be assigned to a separate breakout room so people can come in and ask me questions. Okay. I, will... I, 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 I just do what I'm told. <laughs> uh, we are in the same boat. <laughs> uh, I will send you to room four. Okay, thank you. You finish the math? Okay, you make it right here. All right. So you do need smacking. Okay, go to the next one. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time. So I, I ran that. That was missing. Um, I got a different error now. Okay. Uh, missing see. the implementation of a cuts quality. I guess somewhere in my code, something is wrong. So. <laughs> um, you're running uh, on RCF, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Can I see your? CC because yesterday uh, Hagav find, uh, saw the same problem and I, I think I know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> so this is my CC file. Yeah, if you go to the init part. Oh, this is you, the init part. Uh, yeah, where you declare uh, there. You have this um, stable particles and you apply uh, the PID cut. It seems that the rivet version that we have on RCF uh, doesn't recognize this cut in PID. So you have to apply it in, in your particle loop. Ah, uh, but I, I, I actually, didn't I? Let me see. Here. Exactly. So you have to remove from the the from the top. Yes. Ah. Because okay. there it will not recognize. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm not sure, but I think you can instead of putting uh, the cut there where we, where you declare, I think you can pass uh, here in the analyze when you do this uh, dot particles uh, a few lines above where you are. Up here. Yes, there. Here inside the, the the parentheses, I think you can pass this cut on PID here, and then you don't need to check every particle in the in the loop. Maybe you can try that because I'll it should be that. more efficient. If it complains again, just <laughs> delete just it. Check inside <laughs> the, the particle loop. So for the, the 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 rapidity, so I tried this, but it was complaining last night. Um, so I declared it as being um, P rapidity. Do I need to put it up here as well? Uh, I think you can uh, the same way that you did in the uh, in the init, like with cuts, with cuts? and, the, mm -hmm. and the, the cut that you want to apply. Okay. I think this will work there. <laughs> okay, thank you. No <laughs> Okay, so I am going to, I'm coming. Let me move myself again. <laughs>
Antonio? Yes. Yeah. Uh, here's uh, Thomas. Uh, yesterday we talked about these uh, gammas, the direct gammas, inclusive, decay, and etc. Mm -hmm. We said that the gamma that decays, like from decay, are the inclusive, minus, or, or subtractive uh, prompt gamma. Mm -hmm. And then uh, inclusive gammas as, uh, are basically all gammas, yes. or all photons. And yes. now when, when I'm trying to implement it, uh, which class I should use for all? I mean, now uh, there is a prompt final state, unstable particles, final state. Yeah, I think you can use final state and yeah, just make the requirement in the PID number. Okay, I, I, will, I will try it. Okay, thanks.
Antonio? Yes. I'm looking at a rivet um, uh, on this, uh, how it's called, oxygen. And I'm trying to find something like a documentation, for example, like in a root, you have a class histogram, and I can see a lot of function, like, for example, scaling, subtracting, and this type of thing. So I know how to implement this. But in this rivet, I'm looking in this doxygen, and I'm quite, uh, I would say, lost. <laughs> like, I cannot find like a histogram class that has this function. Mm -hmm. So can you advise me when I want to, in a rivet, do the subtraction or for something like that, how I should look for this information or this, the documentation? Um, just a minute, I think. I'm not sure if you find this. A... Well, maybe I can send you an example of how to do it. Yeah, the, uh, this will work. Uh, I, uh, I will be glad, but it's it, so just a general. I know when I have a problem with root, I go to root documentation. It, yes, I, I understand your pain. <laughs> um, but okay. in the real life, I there is this doc documentation, but it's quite weird, I would say, or I don't understand the structure, maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I will tell you that I'm, I'm used to look at directly in the code instead of looking at the, some page or something like that. But yeah, it would be Yeah, if, if I would have a code with, with basically the same analysis, I, I, I will look there. Yeah, or I can use a grab option and look for a subtract or something like that in all the analysis that are on the GitHub. Let me see if I find what you need. Okay, for rivet itself, I think it's only the, the doxygen. But let me tell you one thing. Everything related to the to histograms, at least, um, rivet use uh, Yoda histograms. So if you, for example, uh, need to check how to do some trick with a histo 1D in, in Rivet, you can look for Yoda histo 1D. And then you will have uh, all the, uh, the methods uh, and functions for that kind of histogram. I mean, you, you could just Google Yoda histo 1D. And then I think that the first uh, link we will have something very similar to what you have with root. Okay, uh, thank you. That was quite helpful. Yeah, uh, I was expecting some something like that in there in, directly in the derivative, but I didn't know that this is like inherited from from the other. Okay, thanks. No problem.
Hi, Antonio. Can I get some help with the uh, merge operation? Yes. All right. Let me, then I guess I can show you what I'm doing. But um, so uh, I have two outputs. Uh, one of which is this rivet copper copper, and this other one's this rivet PP. David. Can anybody hear me? Because I don't hear David anymore. Yes, I can hear. Okay, so it's him, not me. Hi, I'm back you're, at the internet back. Place. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so uh, I just I have this rivet merge uh, command. Actually, I should share my screen. You probably can't see my mouth, can you? I can. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, so uh, so I have this rivet merge command out to rivet final. I'm trying to give it this rivet copper copper and the rivet PP. Um, and then when I use this, um, it just says I have an invalid path name in the copper copper and I will not merge it for you. So. Okay. Um, are you using any uh, flags, uh, sent or beam? Uh, no, I, so when I made them, I, did have flags with sent and beam. So this is this is the command that I, I made it with. Uh, yes. so here at the end, there's this sent equals gen. Yes. So uh, af after rivet merge, you have yeah. to include uh, minus capital O uh, sent and then minus capital O beam. O sent like this and O uh, sorry, sent the, the 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 flag that you use the centrality. Oh. And and the actual centrality that I use. No, no, just ju just the yes. Just like this. Yes. Hmm. All the. All, all the histograms that you have, they are both in the PP and in the copper copper, right? Right. I mean, there's flags so that that the the RAA won't be generated in. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, and the actual code itself, it's just. Um, oof, I can type. So uh, in the code itself. Um, I mean, you declare all histograms for both cases, but you just uh, fill uh, accordingly to the, the beam, right? Yes, that's right. And, and then also in the final line, like I don't do this division stuff if I'm missing the proton. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um. Can I have a look in your uh, in your outputs the for copper copper and PP? Sure. I went to look there, but I'm not sure how to make anything out of it. Like it's huge, right? So I was having problems with my counters because they were counting the cross sections and the cross sections are just like totally bogus in the input file that I have. 
Uh, yeah, I, I was talking with Christian this morning about this. Uh, I sent him the, the file that we use to generate the event. And I, I think he will have a look while we're that, But the fact that these are zero doesn't really mean anything, except that I just wasn't using the counters. So I'm not sure what to look for. They're huge files. Yes, yeah, I, I'm looking at this um, this first string in, in the, the table. But okay, it seems seems fine. Could, could you commit your code and maybe your output also so I can have a better look? Yeah, so the code is there already. Um, I don't think anything's changed in the gap. Yeah. Mm. yeah, the code itself hasn't changed. Okay, it is pushed. Okay.
Hi, Antonio. Uh, yes. Uh, I am having problem when I'm trying to reading uh, a data file. After a while, it says uh, segmentation fault, and it, it stopped. Okay. Um, I'm already checking something. So I, I think I sent you to Hagav. Okay. And maybe he, he can give you a hand. Uh, but we, my name is Wei Zhuang. I'm sorry? Uh, my, my name is Wei Zhuang. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't. I mean, you're going to send me to Raga. Yes. Yeah, okay. Just a minute.
Hi. Hi. For some reason, your uh, admission was not appearing here to me. Okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, do you? Yeah, I mean, I subscribed as instructor, but I was quite busy the last day, so I was only online in Slack. And uh, so I don't know if you need some help now or what would be useful. Um, yeah, well, help is always welcome. Uh, we have some uh, breakout rooms that we are uh, dividing people to get help. Okay. Um, if you want, you want, I can create a breakout room for you and then I could send to someone, or you can maybe just for now stay in the main room and if people have... Then people ask here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can try that. Also, I mean, I have to see if I, probably I'm a bit less experienced than the rest, so. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay, so I keep the audio on and then, yeah, I will, I will hear. Okay, oh, thanks. Thank you. Hi, um, Ragaf is not in the breakout room, so. Oh, uh, he's not there? Yeah, I wait for some 10 minutes and uh, he's still not there. Uh, okay. Um, maybe I can send you to Christian. Okay. Antonio, do you have a any working example of this uh, histogram uh, subtraction I'm trying to do, but with no oh, oh, success. Um, yes, just a minute. I, I will. I will send here in the chat an example. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, Thomas, I uh, put here in the chat uh, a line and yeah, you use this uh, Yoda subtract past the two histograms and you get uh, the subtracted one. Yes, I have tried something like that. So I, I, will, I will try it again. Mm -hmm. And for these histograms in, in the chat, you have, I can use the histograms I booked or? or if they the, are histo one DPTR, yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, 
Hi, David. Uh, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, if I can find the unmute button. I'm still here. Yeah. See, I'm having difficulties to understand why, because I, I noted that it complains about a path of one of your histograms, but only for the copper copper output. For the PP, it seems to be fine, which is strange because you have the same histograms in, in both um, outputs, right? Yes, I do. I think so. I don't know how to check it. I mean, I haven't like fancy dipped them or something, but but I, I initialized the same set of histograms using book. And so I'm assuming that's what makes the output, right? Yes. Um, one thing that maybe you could try is to um, uh, declare or at least comment out most of your histograms and, you know, try to uh, find which one is the problematic because, yeah, I, I, I really don't know why it's complaining only for the copper copper and which one it's the, the problematic. Um, okay, I will, I will do that. See if I can get it back down to like a minimal working example. I, I, maybe if, if I haven't been paying attention, it sounds like people are queuing up for you. Do you have just a moment to, to, to look at one thing that maybe, maybe it is? I'm sorry. I, are other people waiting for you right now, or can I point out one question that I thought was peripheral, but maybe is kind of causing it? No, maybe you can you can go ahead. Okay. Um. So when I was trying to put in the RAA, um, I fill a histogram with uh, positive pi ions and with uh, negative pi ions, right? Pi plus and pi minus. Um. And then only when I get down to the uh, the final, oh, where is it? Finalize. Uh, when I get down to the the final bit, do I add them together with like a temporary histogram? And is this somehow like messing? I mean, it shouldn't because I don't book with them. But uh, so. Here is in copper. Oh, this can't be it though, because this requires copper, copper, and PP. But I have this bit here where I go along and I say, okay, I'm going to make this temporary name because I have four centralities. That's all this I string integer is, or I string array is. Um, and then I copy this histogram for the centrality bin. So I copy the proton into P and P bar. And then I add the P bar into it. So now I have this, this quote unquote temporary histogram with a unique name that has both P and P bar in it, just the Fiota Histo 1D. And then if I have both copper, copper, so that I'm in this loop and PP, then I divide by, I divide my, my RAA value uh, with that. Um, is this, this is the the one thing I I, it, I felt like I had a silly hard time getting this thing to like play nicely yesterday, but I think it finally did. Um, but this is the sort of thing that shouldn't complain until it merges. But is making temporary histograms in the final step is it going to do some weird thing to the memory? Okay, I, I'll tell you what I know uh, is that. Um declaring t temporary histograms can maybe create um, a histogram uh, without the the path um, but I, I don't know if this is in the finalize right it's only in the finalize yeah Yeah, I'm not sure if this would be a problem. Well, okay, maybe uh, maybe Christian is uh, much more uh, have some expertise about that. Maybe he could answer this question. Okay, that uh, sounds 
good. So I, I guess the thing is, I can ask Christian about this, which I'm assuming was fine, but obviously something's broken. Um, and then I will go in and I will just try to remove histograms until I can get this thing to to work. Yeah. Okay. That that sounds like a good path for it. Okay, Christian is in room four. Uh, are you able to to go there, or do you want me to send you? Uh, I can, in fact. Okay. I will. I will join room four. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks. Thank you. Antonio, I have one question. So, uh, is there a way that you can create a histogram, like temp like uh, how he was talking about temporary histogram that is some of the two histograms that you obtain directly from the HEP MC? Uh, HEP data. Sorry. Um. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you, you mean the same binning, right? Yeah, so just copy the binning from the uh, HIP data, but then uh, you will feel it differently than the other histograms directly obtained from HIP data. Yeah, yes, this is possible. Uh, in the slides, there is, let me find the, uh, the number. Uh, here it's. Um, let me share the screen and then. Sure. Okay. C can you see my screen? Yeah, I do. Um, okay, you could do something like this because. Um, see both these histograms they will have the same binning uh, that you have in, in your data uh, connect to yeah. this code okay so you could declare something like that you, you know you okay. declare a scatter 2d using the the ref name it will have uh, the same binning that you have here uh -huh. and then you can declare multiple uh, histograms uh, that you can use, um, you know, th this will not be um, the exactly histogram that you have in, in data, it will be like a copy. Oh, okay. Okay, that works. Uh, yeah, the way I tried it kind of gave me some error, so I just need to follow this then. Um, and with the ratio plots, like, um, so you have to first create the scatter 2D and then you have to do the ratio. Yeah, you, you declare the, the scatter 2D and you de, do the ratio in the finalize. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. Uh, could you send me? And uh, can I share my screen and show you what, what the results, like what's the error? Yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay. So here is my uh, naive implementation. Okay. Okay. And uh, when I run it, there is an error that there is no matching function. And I think that we want to call uh, this function, Yoda mm -hmm. histo uh, one d Yeah, I, I think you're missing the, the asterisk in, in, your, in your code. Okay. So, so we'll go back there. Yeah, I mean, in, in this line, um, 2061, you have to put uh, the asterisk uh, before each of the... the uh, you, you mean uh, ampersand? Uh, no, the, like, like the pointer uh, sign, the, the asterisk. Yeah, this, this, this. Yes, this one. Yeah, well, like like this. Yeah, in the, in the first one too. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought that since the name is Histo1D PTR, it's, it's the pointer itself. But I also tried this version. So. I, you have to put in, in the first, uh, because you're 
I think the arguments. But yeah, the, the, the one that it's getting the, the subtraction. More, more left. Uh, yeah. No, no, this one, it was right. Both of them you have to have, but also in the first one, not the ones in the argument. Yes, and the last one too. And do I, so all of them? All of them, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, Takahito, you, you are still out here, right? Um, did someone call me? Yes, I did. Oh, hi, Hello. Christian. Yes, I um, did. So th there's another person who's having the exact same problem as you did before with this hygiene sample. Antonio, uh -huh. do you know who is the best person to try and resolve that? Uh, hygiene? Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's a super funny problem. Uh, when they run over a specific hygiene sample, the analysis crashes with a sec fault. Uh, after a thousand events, it doesn't happen when they run over the Pythia samples. Um, I tried to check if there were any obvious causes for sec faults in the analysis. I couldn't find any, uh, especially not in the last one, because there we removed uh, the possible cause. Um, do you know if there can be something funny up with the hygiene samples? I don't know. I, I think I have never tested Revit with hygiene. So does it work up to like 900 events and then it, it breaks? It, yeah, it, it, it crashes at a thousand events and at a thousand events, Revit does a dump. So it calls finalize. Yeah. Uh, meaning that it's in finalize, the problem is, or maybe just after finalize or something like that. Um, but in, in the second go, we tried just commenting out whatever was in finalize. That, that didn't help, uh, which leaves me kind of confused. Wait, but if you run over, uh, sorry, it, sorry it's, not in, it's, not with the, it's not with the input file. So if you have another input file over a thousand events, it's fine. Uh, no. Yes, I, I'm running over the the files produced in the in the front temp folder, it all works. But when I'm trying to run the hygiene file, it, it failed with the thousand event. Yeah, uh, I, I tried uh, uh, several files, hygiene files, and then I encountered the same issue exactly at the one thousand events. And then I also commented out everything in, in my VBET analysis, which Basically, it doesn't do anything. It just reads a hypermotical file, and it it still crashes <laughs> at one thousand events. So something is wrong. Okay. Yeah. So I, I really maybe, don't understand what's going on. Maybe Antonio, if if you don't have any other idea either about this, maybe is it possible for you to just throw all of us into the same room? Maybe Raghav can can join us as well, and we can. Try it together and see what is uh, yes, going I on. Can. So yeah, you're running it on 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 RCF, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let me run along with you. Is your code uh, uh, so your code's on GitHub? Uh, I have not yet pushed it. I will push it now. Yeah. Yes, mine is on the GitHub. Yeah. Let me first get on RCF and then we will, I will try to run with you so, so we get the same thing. Okay. Okay, I will send you uh, to room four. Okay. That's strange. It's appearing to me that some of you are already in the four. 
Wait, I'm a, I, I don't think I'm assigned to a room. I think I, I, I'm already assigned to room four and I will go to room four. Ah, okay. Uh, Antonio, can you send me to room with uh, Christine? Yes. Okay. So it worked the the subtraction. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. It 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 work. Uh, I have tried before, but I must uh, done a mistake somewhere. So thank mm. you. Okay, I sent you to Christine.
Hi, Antonio. I have one more question. So um, I created a ratio plot from uh, figure one and figure two. And how do I make this like compare with like a plot in the same um, histogram as uh, figure three, like some other figure? Um, so now when I create like a figure that's a ratio of two other figures, it seems like it doesn't know where to exactly like this doesn't yeah i have to assign it to do something so that it plots it along with the right data set so how do i make that happen you mean the data is not appearing in your yeah okay uh you're using uh, Rivet uh, MK HTML to, to plot your. Uh huh. Yeah. So I mean, I haven't really compiled right this second. So maybe I I can I should do that first. Um. So before the, uh, what I was seeing was that it was creating the ratio plot right from the um, the first two sets of. Um, histograms I have, but then there was data missing because I used the um, that axis from the two other histograms to create this ratio. Make you can maybe you can show the code because sure. I, I'm not sure if I understand or yeah. Let me to... produce the plots first so that. Actually, I need to open stuff in this computer. Um, So I'll share my screen. Okay. That's fine. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So I have these. Um, plots right now. Mm -hmm. hmm. so. so this has something Mm -hmm. Can you see this or is it hidden? Right yes, I, I can see it. Okay. So that one is there. The And then, so that's for charm. This is for bottom. And I wanted to, I created another histogram that's for heavy flavor and divided the bottom by the heavy flavor one. And I wanted to compare that against like um, this data set but it's missing so but i i think you don't have this table uh, d01 x02 in in your uh, in your data right i don't I, yeah it's not there because uh, i didn't know how to add that to, uh, let me let me go back to the code and then maybe i can better explain what i'm trying to say um So this is how I'm creating my histogram. So I have one for charm that's obtained directly from the 
uh, FMC, F data, sorry, I keep saying FMC, and one that I obtained for bottom uh, also from the HAPE data. And then I add those two into this third heavy flavor um, histogram. And I'm creating a ratio plot that takes the bottom one and then divides by the heavy flavor histogram. So all of them have are created with the same ref name, these three. Mm -hmm. So I think when I, because of that, when I create this B fraction histogram, it does not know automatically to compare this with the right, um, right uh, data set, which is this data set that I want to compare with 211, table two, uh, X1 and Y1. Does that explain what I'm trying to do at least? Okay. Um. So my uh, B fraction, um, the data set is in this place, like table two, X1, Y1. So okay. I would have used this uh, ref name, but I, because I'm taking the ratio between the first, um, this second histogram and then the third histogram, I'm using the same x-axis as them so uh, le let me try to understand one thing do you have a double ratio or or or, or no i have that but right now i'm just trying to do single ratio here okay uh, and I'm you're trying, trying to, to take ratio of like the bottom with the heavy flavor the heavy flavor is not in the hep data only charm and bottom are in the um, hip data. So I'm creating a third histogram, which is the sum of those two, and then dividing the bottom one by the heavy flavor one. Okay, what you're trying to do is um, uh, dividing this invariant yield underscore HF by the one you have right above, right? Um, uh, exactly the opposite. So bottom by the heavy flavor. Yeah. Okay, the, the, the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they have the same binning because you're using uh, the half data to book them. Yes. Um, and then uh, are you doing the ratio in the finalize? Yes, I'm doing the ratio in the finalize. And so I filled this, uh, first of all, I filled the denominator here. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm doing the divide uh, between the one of the histograms that I filled above and then the other histogram that I filled, um, that's the sum of the charm in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just, this seems fine to me. Yeah, so I think this seems fine. And I think the reason why it's not plotting it is because um, the ref name that I use over here is the same one for the bottom and heavy flavor, whereas like by hip data exists in this 211, table two. So how will it know automatically to compare it to- uh, No, they don't have the same uh, name because uh, in the histograms you have uh, two strings uh, concatenated, uh, right? You have the ref name and plus uh, you'd uh, invariant you'd bottom and invariant you'd HF. Mm -hmm. So they have, they will have the same binning, but um, they are not directly connected to the histogram that you have in data. This one will be only the, the scatter plot, the, the ratio. Mm -hmm. I see. So what should I do instead so that it knows, like, I, I, I don't know if I'm clear what's happening. So but how the, the point is that uh, the figure of the ratio, uh, you, you don't have anything there or, or only the data? So my question is this, how did it like, um, when, I, when I created these simple histograms, right? How did it know which um, which histogram to compare to which data? It's because of these uh, numbers here, right? Yes. 
so it knew like based on these numbers, it knew, okay, compare the first table, this uh, first column uh, as the X and then the other one as the Y and then compare that with this. So the same thing happened for this histogram because this one, the no. F name is correct. No, both this both histograms they they will not have the the data because mm -hmm. they are being um, booked in, in a different way. The only I one see. that so, will have comparison with data is the scatter plot, this underscore s, because ah. I mean when you do the ratio, um, you you have the the simulation, but this one will have the data. I see. Okay, I, I understand now, I think. So if I, first of all, so if I want uh, this histogram also in my, compared to my uh, data, then I need to create another histogram. I have to kind of do it redundantly almost. Um, but you already have one compared to data, right? It's the, the first one, the one 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 so i have like th uh, three histograms that i want to compare one is one 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 is one one two the other one is two one one so currently it's on only comparing the one 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 yeah uh, then you have to create another histogram the same way that you did for one 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 you do for two one 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 two okay and also separately, I have to do the two one one, but the two one one has to uh, be for the uh, B fraction. Okay, I think I understand. I don't know if I uh, can. Yeah, I mean, I will ask more questions if I have more confusion. Yes, please, to... sure. Okay, <laughs> sorry. No problem. Sorry, I was not able to explain properly what I'm trying. No, no. To... I, I mean, I think you're used to root. And here things are a bit different, so yeah, uh, so it I takes was just time to use the same same histogram for taking the ratio and then trying to compare the original histogram also. But I think you have twice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Hi, Antonio. I'm back. Hi. Okay. Uh, there is uh, quite a problem with still with the server to merge. For me, it doesn't work on any uh, either on RCF or on my local local Docker installation. And I saw that I think it was on Tuesday that it works for you. On, on your machine, is it right? You mean the the rivet merge? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it, okay. it worked, but not when I use Docker. Only when I use my local installation. Okay, so I can install a rivet without a Docker. Yes, on yes. Windows. Yes, it's possible. Okay, so I think that this I should do since with Ragav and I think with others, uh, we found that the, uh, the rivet merge doesn't work on RCF. There is some Python compatibility problem. Uh -huh. I don't know. And it also doesn't work on a Docker, at least the 3.1.2 version. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so for me, right now, I'm at the step where I need to test the, the code. And now it compassed, it seems that it works, but without the rivet merge, it's hard for me to, to say something, if it, if it is uh, working or not. I see. Yeah, so uh, Hirsty, uh put you uh, my Yoda files on ACF or some, I, I'm not sure, uh, on, on Slack, on the last uh, message, there is a thread and she put a link there. 
Mm, ah, yes, I, I see the link. Okay, uh, could you test if the servant merge works for you, for, for, for these files? And I would, in the meantime, try to run, to reinstall the rivet on my on my laptop on, on yeah because okay. i think that without the rivet march i i am not useful anymore okay i i will try to get the, the you have both uh outputs there right yes i hope that christian put put both there if not i will just push my oh my oh my code and the files to, to GitHub and you can pull from. Is it on GitHub? Uh, not yet. I'm not sure what uh, we are doing it for. Uh, that's uh, okay. If it's in uh, ACF, I can try to, to get the files.
Yeah, I've pushed uh, now the, uh, my version to uh, the Git since I also need to download it for, uh, to my uh, local machine. Okay, no, but I, I was able to get the, the files that Christian put on this year. Yeah.
Yes, please. Can you see my screen? Yes. So, like on the left side, so this is when I run the uh, run analysis. Looks good. And then I come here to make close. And it has this complaint. Okay, it seems that it complained in the last plot that you have. Um, Are you using RCF or Docker? Yes. RCF. Okay. Um, by looking at the error, I don't know uh, what could be. Uh, yeah, you have most of the plots. It seems that the only one it's breaking. No, maybe this is the outdated one. Uh, give me. Sorry? Uh, the plot, this is the outdated. And I will. I need like a couple of seconds. Uh, are you using um, the test file for or you're using a, a larger sample to, to run your... I think this one, it, this, was, uh, this is a larger sample. Or I tried the larger sample, but this one is the complaint with the test file. Um, if you get me. Okay, C can you update your code on a GitHub and maybe I can have a deeper look or maybe we'll try to, to run it and debug. Uh, okay, yeah, it's already, I already committed. Okay. Fine. Uh, it's yeah. Phoenix 2012. Yes, and one by one, one, six, one, seven, nine. Uh, I asked the uh, Christine, but she doesn't have a clue. Yeah, some errors in Rivet, it's very difficult to identify what's happening. Give me a minute, I'll check it.
Nice on dog. I tried to run on my computer and it generated the the output without errors. So uh, could you share uh, in your screen your uh, rivet.yoda output? Yes. Could you see clearly? Yes. Um, I think the one that it's breaking is one of the SOWs, maybe the 50 to 60 percent, or after that. Mm, that's the last one. Uh, I, I think I see one of them, this 6292, I think it has a negative value. I think that's why it's yeah. breaking when you try to, to plot it. Um, okay, this is probably um, a problem from the simulation because this number should never be negative. Um, do, do you know how, how many events uh, you used for this? Uh, no, uh, I, I mean, I tried to print out the centrality. Mm -hmm. It's like nine or 10 maybe. I see. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would not be worried about your code. It seems that your code is fine because it's not breaking or anything. But I think this is uh, a issue of the simulation that created a, a negative cross section. Uh, we are trying to investigate why this is happening. It's happening also with David. Um, but yeah, I think it's not, I, nothing wrong with your code. Okay, so I could try to run more statistics? Yeah, this could uh, help, you know, uh, by lucky, because maybe it's a small problem that happens uh, sometimes. And with more statistics, this, you know, kind of disappear. Uh, but it's an issue of the simulation for sure. Mm. If you do something uh, that I, I do not recommend, but if you, for example, uh, erase the minus sign, I think you will be able to plot it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, this is Sorry. not the right thing, but I think this, this will plot with the, without complaining. And actually, I have another question. Oh, no. <laughs> it's still, it's still breaking. Maybe you have another one that it's. Yeah, I, uh, every counter uh, you have uh, a, a duplicated version. Um, in your uh, rivet.yoda. So we changed only one of them, and, but there is another one with the same name. Um, I, 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 I don't know where is it? It will be more or less in the middle of your file. 
because uh, below you have the raw versions mm -hmm. and in the topper yeah Yeah. And does it appear right? Yeah, because you for all histograms you have a raw version and another version that is uh, scaled and uh, divided by being with if it's these things. And uh, just uh, another question apart from this. Uh, I should always scale by this uh, sum of weight. Is that correct? Yes. If your uh, plot is divided by number of events, that's what you have to do. Divide by the, the sum of weights. Oh, at this time it didn't complain. Yeah, it, it's a problem of the, the simulation and not, not your code. Uh, and then one more question. So I am going to uh, simulate RAA of direct photon. The, you know, the nuclear modification factor. Mm -hmm. So I should also run the same on PP. Am I correct? Yes. And then make the ratio to get the nuclear, nuclear modification factor. Yes. And for the number of binary collisions, uh, do I just uh, input from the paper or? I would do that. I, I use the I would use the same value that you have in the paper. Uh, in principle, you could use uh, the information from the simulation, but Christian recently said that uh, this value from the simulation is not very reliable. So it's better to use uh, the value used in the in the paper. Oh, okay, okay. I will, I will do that. Okay. Um, yeah, but before that, I will test more to, to, to make sure it doesn't give another minus. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Hey Antonio, <clears throat> when I compile my code, it doesn't recognize the beam option, even though in the info file I added that option. So I wonder why that is. So I can show you the error that I get. Yeah. Um, yesterday I, I showed a, another way to get the, the beams. Uh -huh. and... I would recommend to use uh, that way, which is taking uh, the beams uh, directly from the simulation and not passing the flag. Okay. Uh, because, yeah, Christian said that maybe this could, you know, create a slowdown in the approval process of this of the analysis. Uh, by using a flag, that would yes. be slower. Okay, because it would be dependent on one what people uh, used, right? So not yeah. reliable, okay. So, but still like, um, just to know what the, I mean, first of all, like uh, where, where can I see that? Like, where can I 
how uh, is it in the slide how to obtain it directly from the yes it's 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 in the beginning of day three slide 43 slide 43 Yes. This oh, okay. One. This beam dot first dot PID. Okay. Yes, it takes the the PID of the beam and then you compare to see if it's gold gold or PP. I see. Okay. And then the energy is also defined. Yeah, you you get from the the simulation that it's this method SQ. RTS, it will take the, oh, okay. the energy times the number of nucleon nucleon collisions. That's why, that's why you compare with 200 times uh, mm -hmm. the number of uh, nucleons in, in, the, in the heavy ion. Oh, okay, so I see. And for other okay, beams, you have in the next slide the codes for copper or... Uh, yeah, I guess you just change the um, values here and then... Yeah, but you have to change also uh, in the comparison to the beam uh, PID that you have this uh -huh. long number. Okay. This is a code for gold. And the next slide, you have the codes for other beams. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think this is enough for me, but yeah, it's good to know how to do that. But um, in any case, just to know what the problem is coming from, like I was wondering why, like even though I already defined in the options, so this, I just uh, use if beam equals to gold gold, then do um, certain. I think it's because, I, I think it's not the problem with the flag, but this string beam, I think it's not declared. I think it was declared as beam opt. Oh. If you look, uh, maybe you can have a look in your .cc. In CC or info? CC. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you go You're to, yeah, if you go to init. Um, I think I took it off. So maybe I didn't realize I needed to declare it here also. I thought like the in, in, stuff in the info was already. So I thought like by having it here, that was enough. Uh, no, no, you, you need. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, but I, I, I would move to the to, okay. to the other strategy to, yeah. to get the beam direct from this movie. Okay, thank you. That was a stupid question. No, no, it, there is no such thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Antonio. Yes. I can ask a, a rather um, very simple question. So with the HTML, um, to view the, the file, how would you, because um, I don't know the command to, to, to get to look at the plots. Uh, you, you are on RCF. Yes. But when I go to my home directory, I don't, I don't see it, even though it says that it's supposed to be in my home directory. You used rivet uh, make make H HTML dash dash pwd rivet dot yoda. Yeah, and then it created a folder uh, uh, index dot html. Sorry. It created a index dot. No, it didn't make a folder. Yeah, it should have created a folder called uh, rivet plots. Hmm. If it's oh, yes, it. yes, it, it did. And I open it, and then in there it tells me that the index.html. Yes, this is uh, where you could 
uh, open and then visualize your your plots. There, there will be a link. You, you click in the link and then it will show the plot. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, I also have a question for the RAA. Actually, I have an RAB since the beam is one is the copper and the other is a gold. What should be the NN uh, in this, you know, on, on slide 43? For the gold, gold, it was 187. Uh, yeah, you are muted, Antonio. Sorry, <laughs> uh, you, you have an axiometric uh, beam. Yes. Okay. For this case, I don't know, but if Christian is still here, let me see. Yeah, I think Christian is in room four. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I really don't know the answer because I checked this some time ago and I was a bit confusing of what this uh, SQRTS is returning. Mm -hmm. So I, I will send you to room four and maybe you can okay. ask him. And okay. then I will ask you a favor later to tell me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. Okay, I'll send you to, to room four. Yes, thanks. Uh, hi, uh, Antonio. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a naive question. So, uh, where, uh, how, what should I do to run more statistics? So, I need uh, another simulation file. Uh, maybe I think Christine can help you with that because she generated the uh, the simulations. Because uh, you're using Gold Gold. Yes. Uh, okay, I think maybe I know just now she tried to run a bigger file on my um, on my code and I saw where she I, I saw the path to, to that file. So that is what I should go to. Yes, yes, there I think will be you'll find some simulations with different picky hard beans. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, then, okay, then if I need more questions, I will ask uh, Christine. I think she knows better. Okay. Thank you.
Takahito, did you try that Perl command? Oh, yes, I did. But uh, my analysis still crashes with the updated head Monte Carlo file. Uh, with, with what? Uh, my, my analysis still crash with the updated HEP Monte Carlo file with the Perl script. So it's the same one that crashes? Yeah, it looks like the same program. Ah, can you show me the, can you, what is the directory of the file that you, that you now updated? I can take a look. The Perl script is not actually working for me. When I run the Perl script on some sample test file, it's not, it's not producing anything. It actually updates the file. It's the same file. It updates the one line that starts with the E. Ah, okay. It updates the file. Yeah, okay. it, I mean it should. I checked it. So uh, show me the directory where you where you where you ran it. I thought it it would um it would produce some new file. No, okay. it updates the existing file. So let okay. me. Okay, I will try. Yeah. Thanks. So Antonio, we, we just joined you out here because I thought it would maybe be good to take some of the more persistent issues just once where we're all here. Mm -hmm. Because I, I found myself trying to explain an issue while I was explaining the same issue, typing it in on Slack. So uh, that, that was a bit counterproductive. Uh, yeah. um, but I think we should have Christine out here as well. Yeah. I tried to- Is she helping months. someone in another room? I'm not sure. No, it appears like she's the only one in her room currently. Uh, yeah, Raghav, I'm also miss, have, having the same issue as before, the segment fault. Interesting. Yeah, let's take a look. I, the event weight is now one. So that can't be the problem. No, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not the weight, it's the cross section. Uh, what, which, which one is the cross section? It's, I, I cannot I cannot parse HEPMC output by by eye. There, there's supposed to be a cross section block in there somewhere. It's in the event, right? I thought it was the last one. It's the last variable in the in the in the event line. Minus one, minus one, minus one. So that there's supposed to be a, a cross section block, just like uh, a PDF block or whatever block. No, there's no block in, in like HEPMC2, it's on a line that starts with E. Maybe I can share my screen. And, uh, yeah. Just a minute. I'm trying to find the second event. Like, my God, how many particles does this event have? See, for example, this one, this is the cross section. Yeah, yeah this, is. this is what you need. Oh, I was, a, yeah, I was, a, I was an idiot. I was changing the, the weight that's at the end of the event file. There is no line that starts with C. That's that's why. Yeah, that, that, that's the problem. So what I thought you were doing was to just add a line which said C11. Yes, no, that's not what I was doing. I was replacing the zero that's in the event at the end, the weight. I was replacing that with uh, one. Okay. So after the UGV and we had two lines. C11, I will try again this line for each event. Yeah, I, yeah. I see. So that's, what, so when, that's what we need to do. Yeah. Yeah, when, when, I, when I open the hygiene event file, it has a heavy iron block and then it just, it's 
seems like you just have one big vertex that connects everything. Um, so it, it should have a line starting with the letter C. And that is what's causing the problems. Um, can we ping Christine out here some, somehow? Yeah, I sent her a message on Skype. Okay, maybe, maybe she just went out. Antonio? Yes. Yeah, uh, I uh, was able to install uh, locally the the rivet and the rivet merge works, uh, but there is some warning or error. It, it doesn't, uh, couldn't find the rev data, the break 2019 synthetic calibration uh, that uh, was declared centrality in init fu function. Oh, yeah, but it, it did it generate the the merged uh, file. Uh, okay, uh, I will look. Yeah, it's working now. After I add the C one one, the the file runs. Excellent. Problem solved. Yeah. Yeah. No, it didn't write the, the final, final one. Right. Thank you very much, Christian Ragaf. Hi. Yes, I see now everybody is in the main room, huh? Yes. Yeah, so. yep. Okay. <sighs> so we, we have a couple of outstanding issues and I thought it would probably be good to just have them all out here such that everybody can hear the uh, explanations. Um, so first of all, there's the negative weights issue. So Antonio was kind enough to send me the file uh, that you used, I was going through it and figured out that what we are encountering is probably a bug which was introduced very recently in Pythia. So it's a Pythia bug um, which mismanages uh, uh, the nominal event weights. Um, there is not much we can do about it except for generate. So if we want copper copper or gold gold samples with correct event weights, uh, we would have to downgrade Pythia to a version where the bug is not there. And I don't know exactly what version that would be at the moment. I can sit down and try and figure it out tonight. If you can um, give me a version, running on RCF is actually pretty quick. So if you can, I the my cutoff is that I have to pick the kids up at five. So if I can get the jobs submitted tonight, they will run in the be run in the morning by the morning. 
Okay. I, I will but that's see late can, for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I will see what I can do. I probably have to, to run and get the dinner with the family soon. But, uh, uh, but, but that, that is one issue. So what one can do for just bug fixing is to run on a PP sample where this is not a problem because Pythia PP doesn't set any nominal weight anywhere. So, so there's nothing to be mismanaged by this new weight container in Pythia, which is the source of the problem. So on um, RCF, there are in fact a whole bunch of proton proton events generated. So you guys can use those, although you have to basically ignore any selection of beams. So it runs all the time on everything. Yeah. So, yeah, so that is unfortunate, but uh... Uh, the, the tutorials are always nice because you find all the bugs you thought you had forgotten. This, this is always the case when doing <laughs> these things. Uh, that, that's one. Then, then there's the Rivet merge issue. I would hope that the newest release version of Rivet, uh, which is like a week old or something, has this working. If not, I would like to hear about it. It has some other problems, actually, uh, which I discovered uh, <laughs> late night two days ago when I tried to compile it. Uh, but as long as you don't have a super weird uh, build setup, it, it should run fine. Um, yeah, the problem, the, the rivet merge problem that everyone was encountering was Starting from Rivet 3.10, we make the decision to move exclusively to Python 3, but everything was not updated in the Python API. So Rivet merge had problems uh, and could only work with Python 2. But that should hopefully be fixed now in latest release version. OK, so there's one action item which I may be able to, I, I may be able to install um, the latest version of Rivet in my home directory on RCF and see if that is going to work. Um, and I think then everybody would have access, who's using AC, RCF would have access to it. Yeah, but, but this is only a problem when running Rivet merge on your already generated samples. So in principle, what one could do is just to do all the rest, ignore the rivet merge, and then just have, just install it locally in your own, own machine and run rivet merge there, for example. Because this is only a problem for rivet merge. Nothing else is affected. Yeah, so some people are using RCF because of various issues getting code installed on their laptops. So yeah. that may not be, that may work for a handful of people, but it may not work but for everybody. It, it could also work with, so using the Dockerized version, for example, which is also the new, newest version of Rivet. Just running Rivet Merge through that would hopefully also work. But I have never done Rivet Merge with Docker, so there may be other issues. Um, then the final thing was this hygiene sample, and there we actually managed to figure out what the cause was. So when Rivet fi runs finalize, it needs access to the full cross section because it wants to print out the cross section. And since hygiene doesn't define the cross section block in HEPMC, it says, whoops, I cannot do that. Let me just sec fault to be on the same safe side. Um, I think we have corrected this issue such that you can actually run HEPMC files without cross-section in the latest version of Rivet, though I'm not sure. Um, but, but this is indeed the issue. So we tried, or Raghav tried, I should say, uh, uh, to, 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 to just fix the file. Because for, for most of these analyses, it's not necessary to have the cross section at all. So you can just write a Perl script that just plugs in a line for each event that says C11. I think the Perl script is still work in progress, but, but maybe it works now, I don't know. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, if you want to add something to the file, then you have to, there is a bash example that you, I have right now that adds line by line. But if you, if these guys already figured it out, then it should be fine. I just had manually for each event. <laughs> That's what he went in my sample, yeah, so. Oh, yeah, you should not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's not hard to write a macro to add lines to the files. Yeah. Uh, let me put it in the in the in the Slack. Okay, Thanks. but I think these are the problems we we had. Well, that's good in some sense that those there are a number of irreducible problems that are not the fault of the participants. <laughs> it, it of course reflects poorly on me because it's it's all my no. software, which is crashing and burning, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> not, no. Nah, you I deserve it, Christian. You, you deserve it. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the other, you don't really, who would figure out that Angantir has issues with negative weights that cause problems when using rivet until you have a large pool of people trying to use rivet on Angantir. Yes. So in that sense, let's call it a success because it's 2020 and we need as many successes as we can get, guys. <laughs> yeah. OK, so I think after we close, and I think this is a good time to close, the um, I will try to install the latest Rivet version um, on RCF and see if we can get something that works for people. I'm not going to send it out unless it works. I mean, I, I, I think in, in, in total, there's a lot of success going around. I, I saw some pretty well advanced analyses at this point today. So, yeah. I, I, it looks like mostly people are stuck at the point where, I mean, they're far enough to get issues with negative sums of weights and uh, issues with rivet merge. So um, I'm gonna guess, cause what we had on the schedule was we were assuming people would be able to present results, but with rivet merge not tomorrow, but with rivet merge not working, that may be a little ambitious um so if if anyone wants to give us present results which also could be from what you have on a small sample um let me and antonio know otherwise we are going to i think tomorrow will be more troubleshooting Okay, uh, can I have a question before uh, we end today? Of um, course, but if it takes too long, we will not hold the meeting for just that question. Okay, so I have tried to install uh, the rivet uh, for, uh, to my, on my laptop, just a rivet without a docker. I use a version 3.1.0 since I think Antonio has this version and revert merge works for him. And it seems that it's almost working for me, but I have one error that I think or believe that can be fixed, but I think that I need a little bit help with, with this. So I, I don't want to uh, uh, extend this meeting uh, for longer, but if I for all can share my screen for somebody, it would be helpful. Right. But go ahead and share your screen. But you said you're using Rivet 3.1.0, which is the one that we've had problems with. Yes, uh, but on, on my local machine. And here, here it basically works. This is the output uh, from, uh, from March here. And there is just one error here about Oh, the you are break. using Docker, so you will. Um, no, no, copy. he installed. I think. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah, I installed. So you need my to. You need to do. Version. So what you need to do is the following. Uh, 
you, you have to export the rivet analysis path to PWD such that it can pick up your reference data file. Okay, so here I need to also give- There is a dot, it's, it, it did, he, he does have it. Ah. And do you actually have this file that it can't find in your path? I think this is from the 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 calibra the centrality calibration. Yeah, this file is from uh, I'm in the okay, I zoom, zoom in the yeah, but that's not a file, right? It's a yeah. it's a it's the histogram from the centrality yeah. calibration, I yeah. think. Yeah, it's from the line, yeah. Okay, it seems that <laughs> no quick, but, uh, there will be no quick But it, 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 does it, does it actually give you output or not? No, uh, I, I don't, I don't uh, see uh, the output. Okay. Well, let's see. So, uh, okay, so my problem here is I'm not completely familiar with this way where, where you put the centrality calibration like like this. I think, Antonio, this was something you came up with. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm not sure how to how to bug fix it. Yeah, I thought, I... You, had a, what, I thought you had a working version of this, Antonio. Uh, yeah, but it seems that not for rivet merge. But I will have a look then. Okay. Okay, I, I mean, I, I have a guess of a workaround if you want to get your files uh, merged, which is just comment the line in the init and try to run only the rivet merge. I think this will work, but that's not the ideal. All right, I think this may be specific enough and that I would propose that we wrap up the meeting. So okay. perhaps Antonio and Tomash can stay on and see if they can sort it out. And otherwise, everyone else is free to go. And we will see each other tomorrow. And we're this far away. Hopefully, we can figure out some way of getting some actual results, because I think that the, these analyses look good. See you guys Thank tomorrow. Have a very product, productive day. See you. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Take care, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Uh, Antonio, you are staying here? Uh, yes. I mean, um, I, I noticed this problem 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and if you do the following, uh, the, you comment that the line in your .cc, right? Uh, yeah, I, I will show, share my screen and I will show you what uh, I did. So, in uh, this file, yes, that's uh, I need to check. Yeah, it's the right. I I commented the, the line declare centrality. Yes. Then I go to run analysis and command, uh, command uh, the rivet yes. thing that produce these data files. Okay, uh, then I run, uh, run it. And uh, this is, yeah, I have quite uh, yeah, this many is good. This is good. I mean, they scatter to D, it will not uh, merge, this is normal. But then go to the end and see if there is. Yeah, no error. So. Yeah. So probably now you'll have a rivet underscore final dot yoda. Okay. Yeah, it's here. Yes. Okay. I so mean, then. I... I mean, that, that's a workaround. <laughs> it's not the ideal. I, I'll check why this is happening and try to, yeah. okay. to come up with a fix. Okay, so well, I think that now I, I can try something. So it seems that 
Yeah. Oh. So thank thank you for this no work round. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I would try to, uh, to to fix this so you don't need to change. Yeah. It. So now it seems that idea. Uh, yeah, some warnings, but I have the plot, so that's that's the main thing. Okay. Uh, so th thank you and. No uh, uh, Oh, uh, see you tomorrow. Yes, see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye.